Welcome to Las Vegas to Structures Research Infrastructure Summit 2024. I am now joined by Jonathan Schildkritz, SVP and Head of Capital Markets and Investor Relations for Compass Data Centers. And Jonathan, it's a pleasure seeing you. It's great to see you, Joe. Uh, I saw you at the early end of summer a few months ago in London, so it's, it's good to see you again now this time in Vegas. A very warm Vegas, actually. It's really hot outside. <laughs> um, let's talk about the market before we jump into what Compass is doing. There's been a lot of consolidation. There's a lot of M&A happening. There's a lot of capital raising. How do you, I mean, what do you think is, how do you view the state of the market right now when it comes to consolidation, to M&A? Um, what, what, what's your feelings of what's happening around the world at the moment? Well, look, I think that um, obviously there, there's a lot of need for capital. And so mm -hmm. most of the companies, including Compass, are trying to tap as much capital as we can. I think that, you know, when you start to look at the scale of the major players in the market, uh, they're at a size right now that it's pretty difficult for people to swallow. Um, I think that a lot of companies have gone private over the last several years and, and they're going to need to be a way to figure out how to sort of get the capital out of those platforms. As a result, I don't think there's going to be a ton of M&A. There'll probably be some at the lower, sort of smaller scale. And I also think that there could be very sort of market specific M&A, like I need to add an asset in a specific market to build out and sort of diversify the portfolio. But I just think that the sort of days of getting big to be big are probably behind us. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen that a lot more, the, the, the buying the one or two data center assets uh, as opposed to buying full platforms because uh, there, there aren't a lot more to buy at this stage anyway. Uh, we, we have to build the next wave and then do it again in five or ten years' time. We've got to, we've got to go again at a tits later. Absolutely. But I do think what will happen in terms of sort of that M&A sort of overview or, or sort of pedestal is that I think that a lot of people will be looking at ways to sort of pull equity out of the assets they have. And so I would imagine that we will see more sort of funds start to develop where you can access a portfolio of stabilized assets as a minority investor mm -hmm. and sort of get access to those cash flows. So it won't really be sort of a consolidation, but it'll be other ways to sort of for investors to put capital to work inside mm -hmm. the space. Okay. So and when you look at selling an asset, what sort of financial metrics do you prioritize? So. Again, we're not selling any assets yeah. right now, but I think when we're developing assets, the, the number one metric for us is, is certainly going to be sort of our NOI yield. So we're going to be really careful about the amount of capital we have to deploy and also make sure that we price it appropriately so that we can get uh, appropriate risk adjusted return on the capital that we put into the market. So we're still very yield focused. That being said, I think you know, we're starting to get to a point in time where we're sort of looking at not just sort of the incoming or the day one economics, but sort of saying, all right, well, what's gonna happen to this asset over its life cycle? And as you start to do that, I think other metrics become very important. You know, How much leverage you put on it and ultimately sort of your unlevered uh, IRRs and even a new one last couple of years, MOIC, you know, multiple of invested capital. So I think those become more important as you look at sort of the life cycle of the asset. I haven't heard of Moik before. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's you know, a new one for me. <laughs> four years ago, I hadn't heard of Moik myself. So, but well, the private equity folks are definitely focused yeah. on this metric. I, they like Moiks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think another aspect of uh, running a data center business, and again, this doesn't have to be necessarily uh, compass focus on this one. It's that we really focus a lot on building the facility. It's the, the first investment of bringing, like raising the thing from the ground. We don't really talk too much about what comes after the upgrades, the upkeeping of the facility. How would you ba balance things out, or how can operators balance things out when it comes from first building and then actually maintaining the facility? Because there's a big OPEX that comes with it. You know, it's a great question. And some of it's OPEX and some of it's CAPEX, right? Maintenance CAPEX. Um, so our facilities are generally new. It's our portfolio is mm -hmm. only a couple of years old on average. So we're not sort of into a heavy maintenance cycle, but overall, I think that we'd like to put sort of new capital to work to build, you know, new facilities. Um, that being said, um, you know, the approach at Compass, I think, is somewhat unique in the industry in that the way that we construct our data centers, we like to think of them as sort of forever assets. Mm -hmm. So our data halls, the main part of the building, that is all sort of under the roof, if you will. And that really doesn't ever change. But outside of the building, we've got our power centers, we've got our generators, and then we've got our mechanical plant, the air conditioners. And those pieces of equipment can be changed pretty easily. Again, you know, you don't have to go into the data hall. 
And so we're looking at sort of future-proofing these data centers. How do we maintain them over time? You're in, a, I think, nine markets in the U.S., two in Canada, Milan, and Israel as well. What is the expansion plan? Because you've also made some headlines around gigawatt campuses. Um, what's, what are you planning in terms of building up the footprint of Compass? So both in the U.S. and outside. Yeah, so look, it's a great question. I think that, you know, we just recapped last year. Um, so we brought in some new equity, but we're, we're owned you know, in equal parts by Ontario Teachers and Brookfield, and then management has a piece as well. So our two new equity partners came in and we sat down and sort of did a big strategic review. And I think historically we were out there sort of prosecuting different opportunities as they came up. You know, what we're really trying to establish and really fortify is our position as sort of the big campus guys. And so in the US, you know, we don't look at a campus that would support less than 200 megawatts of IT load. I think as we look into Europe, it's probably 100 megawatts of IT load. It's a little harder to develop uh, at the same scale. But you know, going forward, I would say we'll probably really be more concentrated with larger footprints and sort of less scattered shot than, mm. than we might have been otherwise. Mm. Okay, because of course Ontario and Brookfield are two big players in the field. I mean, Brookfield just acquired data for a few months ago for That's three true. billion, four billion. We don't know the actual number, but we know it's around that number. Um, do you guys, and this is a bit of a side question, do you guys work together? Have they become like a sister company to you? Or is it still very much separate? And just because you have a common investor doesn't mean... Yeah, it's still yeah. very much separate. You know, yeah. look, this is a small industry. Exactly. I think yeah. you know really world. well. <laughs> so we know Olivier and Adam Levine, and we know the Data4 team, I think mm -hmm. just through personal relationships over the years. And that's a great company, and we have a lot of respect for them. Um, but, you know, it's still very much a separate entity. So we really haven't gotten to the point where we're sort of looking at it um, in a more holistic fashion. Um, we're out there, the opportunity in North America and certainly within our target markets is, is large enough that we don't really have to sort of cross paths with them. And I think, again, going after sort of the big campuses, which is really our focus, mm -hmm. it sort of separates us from them from a sort of competitive positioning perspective. Okay. And of course, you've cracked North America, you've cracked Europe. When's APAC? When's Latin America? When's, when's the regions they haven't cracked yet? <laughs> well, I mean, if you could help supply a lot of capital, I think we'd go and yeah. prosecute all those opportunities. <laughs> but, you know, given the scale of the opportunity mm -hmm. here in North America, I think that It'll be our primary focus over the next couple of years, and then we'll sort of maybe continue to make investments in Europe. Um, I think APAC is probably just not on the schedule for us right now, um, but uh, you know, never say never. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity, so. Uh, no, it's, it's tremendous. I, I don't think though, you know, you look at, at Asia and it is, it's a, it's a lot of different markets. It's not a market, you know, the United States, doing business and even in western europe it's all very similar and i think doing business in asia is is very different so you know, even as i look at those markets from a compass lens i would imagine that we would seek some sort of local expertise um, in order to be able to prosecute that but again it's really not on our current roadmap okay and i'm almost about to let you go but one question on capital raising yes uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be related to compass just a general intro question some people say there's a lot of capital out there. There is capital out there. How hard it is to get capital at the moment, and how do you navigate rising interest rates? How do you navigate rising power energy costs? Um, how do you balance all that when you go out and ask for money? Um, so, well, it's hard. Um, yeah. I, if, look, it wasn't, if it wasn't, it wouldn't have this fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Look, I, I do think that there's a lot of capital that wants to be invested in this space. Yeah. Um, but each of those sleeves of capital have, you know, their own sort of qualifications that they look for as they put capital to work. Do I want development risk? Do I want development returns? Do I want stabilized um, assets and those types of returns? And so what we see is a makeup of a lot of different types of investors out there. And so really matching up the right investor, the right investment approach to sort of what we have and what we're trying to do. Um, is always the biggest challenge. And, and I think that what has made Compass, you know, well positioned to raise new capital is that we've really narrowly focused uh, on the customers that have, you know, investment grade or, or, and higher credit ratings. And that makes, you know, putting debt out into the capital markets like an ABS, you know, much easier. Um, and it also attracts, you know, more sort of potential equity partners, I would think, over time as we look at sort of our asset portfolio and, and look to get new capital for expansion. Okay. And then final question, and then you can go because I think you've got a flight to catch at some point today. Um, 
we are an infrastructure summit 2024 in 12 months time we're going to come back here what is the one thing you think the industry needs to to get a grip on it can be a, a mindset changing thing it can be some an adoption of something sure what's the one thing that needs to change well I think that there are probably two or three things that people really need to focus on. Obviously, this week we've talked a lot about power and securing power and sort of making sure that there's a glide path for our customers to continue to grow and serve the market. So power will continue to be a dominating topic in the industry. I think that we will spend a lot of time over the next 12 months really understanding what's happening from a GPU, chip architecture, power densities, um, what the glide path is for, for the different chips that are going to come out over the next 12 months and beyond. And then sort of the corollary to that is how do we keep that chipset cool um, because the densities are higher. And so I think it's really going to be about securing power understanding the technology that's being deployed in our data centers and making sure we have the ability to cool that over time. And I'll still have probably some supply chain issues as well that need to be overcome. Yeah. But that goes beyond the data center. I, I agree. Look, you know, Compass again, and I was talking a little bit about this before, you know, we've designed our suppliers into our prototype. And as a result, what we have is an agreement for a certain amount of capacity, X number of megawatts a month of equipment to be delivered. So. To your point, at the data center level, at the construction level, supply chain is not really where sort of we're worried. I think that the supply chain issue has sort of moved a little bit, you know, pig through the snake type of thing, where it's really now at the utility level. So does the utility supply chain work? Is there the right equipment, the transformers, the circuit breakers to build out substations? Are there the transmission lines to get the power to the site? So I do think that, that the supply chain issue is different than the one that we experienced a few years ago, yep. but it's definitely an area that needs concentration. Okay, and hopefully we'll see change in the next 12 months and we're just going to even build it faster and bigger. <laughs> well, uh, um, hopefully not too fast so that yeah. we all flood the market with capacity. Yeah. But... I don't think we're on a danger of that not right I now. I know, there's so much demand. Yeah, I it's... think for the next five, 10 years, it's quite safe. We're, uh, we're in a golden age for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I've been in the data center space for 21 years. And um, the longer I'm here, the younger it gets. Mm -hmm. I like that because I'm getting older <laughs> as well. So that makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Shilcroft. Uh, SVP and Head of Capital Markets and Investor Relations at Compass Data Centers. That's a long name. Thanks so much for talking to me. Ciao. Uh, Great seeing you again, you. buddy. And as for your home, thank you for watching. And do check our website and social media for the latest content from the digital infrastructure sector worldwide. At Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.